Even though I always thought Lloyd de Maus had some great points, I always thought that his theory of war as a birth fantasy was a bit of a stretch. No doubt de Maus was able to make all the pieces fit and weave a very compelling narrative, for me at least, but I just couldn't get my mind around this idea that memories of birth and being in the womb could be a driving force in galvanizing people for war. The idea of infantry bursting forth from the motherland in a war as birth fantasy seemed while superficially plausible, rather far-fetched. And this is not because I don't believe in the projection of the personal onto the political, as people clearly project parental authority onto the state, which is aided by the state education camps, in which obedience to the teacher is equated to obedience to the parent, who then asks, what were your grades? As getting good grades is obedience to the teacher, is also obedience to the parent. That's why the state education camps really entrench the state, because they strengthen this projection of parental authority on the state. It wasn't until I heard this podcast that I'll link in the description on Shrink Rap Radio, entitled Pre- and Perinatal Psychology with William Emerson, where Dr. Dave interviews William Emerson about prenatal and perinatal memories. That's when I started to give this idea of a prenatal parental projection onto the state any credence. Because that's really what DeMaus is talking about, a projection of the prenatal parent onto the state. An example used by Emerson that stuck out to me was the story of these twins, who, uh, uh, who apparently it was discovered that one was dominant while they were in the womb. That is, you know, even as fetuses, one of the twins was dominant, and whenever one of the fetuses would kick or crowd out the other one, the more passive fetus would grab onto the placenta and put his face into his uh, mom's placenta. After they were born, the dominant twin remained dominant and even claimed to be older, uh, which was in fact true as the dominant twin was born first. One day, these twins were taken shopping, and the more passive twin, as, were, as they were going through the Oz whatever, he saw this pink pillow and immediately lunged forward for that pillow and said he wanted that pillow. And the, uh, the mom bought the pillow. And whenever the dominant twin pushed the passive twin out of something or just made fun of the passive twin or whatever, the, the passive twin would grab onto the pink pillow, and just like in the womb, he would put his face into the pillow. When you have all of these nebulous, unresolved memories, it's like a minefield where you don't know where the mines are. This is why going back and uncovering childhood memories is important. Because if not, you'll be talking about snow cones and baseball, and then all of a sudden you'll have this uh, sense of abandonment and you won't know why. And I think that giving prenatal psychology some respect, some of the minefields can be mapped out and cleared. And so I think some of the nebulous attachment to the state, or any sort of archon, may go all the way back to the womb. I had always made the comment that statists view the state as the medium in which everyone else functions, as if the state is ubiquitous. Even its name, the state, implies an all-encompassing presence. And of course, the state as a medium is simply a projection of the amniotic fluid. The titan is in the mind, the same illusion that makes people continue to view their parents as authorities in their lives is the same illusion that causes them to view the state as an authority.